Before we start diving into code and algorithms, let's talk a little bit about recommender systems at a high level. You encounter them every day and might not even think about it. They can take many different forms and serve many different purposes. My own claim to fame is recommending things. I worked on Amazon's early recommender systems, which look at your past purchasing behavior to recommend other products you might like. For example, I recently bought a gas-powered generator, and Amazon is automatically recommending things like starter fluid and motor oil to me. You'd be amazed how effective these recommendations can be. Billions of dollars have resulted from them, and they've helped people find the things that they need. The beauty of it is that it's all data-driven. Recommender systems find relationships between users and between items just based on actions. Usually there's no human curation involved at all. It knows that statistically, people who buy generators also buy starter fluid, and it can use those historical patterns to show people stuff they want before they even know they want it. But you don't have to limit yourself to recommending things. You can also recommend content. Here's a recommender system used by the New York Times, which is a popular newspaper in the US. It looks at articles you've read in the past to recommend other articles you might enjoy reading. Same idea, just looking at patterns in the articles people read instead of patterns in the stuff people buy. Music recommendations is its own special case. Sure, you can treat it just like any other content and recommend music that other people have listened to who share your tastes, but services like Pandora take it a step further and analyze the waveforms of the music itself to find similarities between tempos, musical styles, and song structures. This is an example of content-based recommendations, where your recommendations aren't just based on user behavior, but on the properties of the things you're recommending themselves, in this case, the musical properties of the songs you like. Look up Pandora's Music Genome Project if you're interested in more depth on that. Why stop at products, content, and music? You can even recommend people. That's basically what online dating websites do. They are recommender systems as well. As a married man, though, it's not really my area of expertise. There's even a fine line between search engines and recommender systems. Modern search results tend to be personalized. It's not just doing information retrieval, it's looking at your past behavior as an individual to figure out what search results are most relevant to you. Think of it as recommending web pages, just like you would recommend books, music, or newspaper articles. In this example, I typed in the name of my favorite sushi restaurant, and although that name means many different things to many different people, Google knows where I live, where I've been, and the websites I've visited in the past, and it can use all that information to pull up results about the restaurant down the street from me instead of pages about Yukihana's Japanese translation of Snowflower. So you see, recommender systems are everywhere, and they are responsible for a huge portion of the modern economy. It's not something you hear about often, but people who know how to build them are in very high demand because recommender systems can have a direct influence on a company's sales. Whether you're trying to recommend things, articles, music, movies, people, or web pages, recommender systems are the technology behind it.